Helicopters are not typically known as discrete machines. Their roaring turbine exhaust, whining overhead blades, and buzzing tail rotors can usually be heard from miles away. Yet, at the height of the Vietnam War, the CIA decided that only the versatility of a helicopter would allow them to pull off one of the most famous top-secret wiretapping operations to ever take place in enemy territory. In response to the mission plans, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, was left to figure out what many considered impossible, how to create a stealth helicopter. Orders were sent to the aircraft division of the Hughes Tool Company to take on the project, codenamed Main Street. Tested at Area 51, the program would create two copies of a special purpose helicopter, the Hughes 500P. Their target would be a phone line deep within North Vietnam. It was a mission that would truly test if the helicopter was deserving of its nickname, the Quiet One. Even before being approached about Project Main Street, the Hughes Tool Aircraft Division was working on several secret stealth helicopter technologies as early as 1968. Engineers at Hughes had identified the tail rotors as one of the chief culprits of helicopter noise, and the researchers discovered that by doubling the number of blades to four, they were able to cut the speed of a rotor in half to achieve a dramatic reduction in sound output. Thanks to the breakthrough, the U.S. government became keenly interested in how far the Hughes Corporation could push its silent helicopter technology, and a blank check was issued to commence work on the top-secret program. Additional modifications to the Quiet One were made, such as adding a supplemental main rotor blade, alterations to the tips of the blades, and adjustments to the engine that could allow the pilot to slow down the rotor speed, thereby reducing noise. The helicopter also had extra fuel tanks in the rear passenger compartment, an alcohol water injection system to boost the engine's power output for short periods, an engine exhaust muffler, and lead vinyl pads to deaden vibration noises from the aircraft's skin. Test flights of the quiet helicopter included low-level work at the secret Area 51 Air Force Base in Nevada. Coincidentally, it was probably these same tests that sparked the conspiracy theories regarding the development of so-called black helicopters that's alive and well to this day. It was the CIA's Special Operations Division Air Branch that first came up with the idea of using silent helicopters in Southeast Asia to quietly drop off and pick up agents in enemy territory. The CIA bought two of the top-secret helicopters for a supposedly civilian firm called Air America. The organization's facade was that of a private charter airline delivering food and supplies to civilians in Laos, as well as occasional combat evacuation missions in both Laos and neighboring South Vietnam. The airline, however, was a CIA front, formed in 1959 and entirely beholden to the CIA, the Department of State, and the Pentagon. Air America was involved in dangerous missions during the U.S.'s disastrous Southeast Asia campaigns, during which 217 of its employees died in Laos. The helicopter's mission would be to find out whether the communist North Vietnamese were following the peace terms of the Paris Peace Talks, agreed to between North Vietnam, the U.S., and South Vietnam in October of 1972. Henry Kissinger, U.S. Secretary of State to President Richard Nixon, suspected that the North Vietnamese were using the Paris Agreement as a smokescreen to plan a future attack. U.S. intelligence believed that only tapping North Vietnamese lines of communication would reveal the truth. The CIA had previously wiretapped communist telephone lines in Vietnam, but the government of North Vietnam had cracked down on the few accessible tampering sites. Constant patrols made it impossible for the CIA to continue monitoring those Vietnamese lines. However, a facility for military phone lines on a hill near the industrial city of Vinh presented itself as prime real estate for espionage. If the telephone lines were accessed, the CIA would be able to monitor North Vietnam's military commanders. The phone lines ran along a string of telephone poles alongside a patrolled bicycle path, making them challenging to access and tamper with. Thanks to aerial photography, 
The CIA discovered a weak spot in a bluff east of the Cow River, only 15 miles or so southwest of Vin. The terrain there was too steep for bike patrols, so the patrol path deviated to follow the river before rejoining the telephone poles on the bluff's far side. The CIA believed that would be the best place to drop off commandos to place a wiretap. Only a helicopter could reach the location, but it would have to be a very quiet one. The two quiet ones were shipped to Taiwan in October 1971. The CIA's original plan was that the VIN wiretap mission would be flown by pilots from the Taiwanese Air Force. This would offer the United States some plausible deniability, however flimsy, about its involvement were any of the helicopters to be captured. In the meantime, Air America accepted delivery of two more Hughes 500 models in Thailand to be used for air taxi operations. The job of the standard helicopters was to distract attention from the quiet ones before they even landed in Laos. Since the Hughes 500 models were uncommon in Laos, Air America had to normalize them in full view of those who may be sympathizers of or spies for North Vietnam. Initial flight training on the Quiet Ones was completed in Taiwan by June 1972. The two helicopters then traveled on a C-130 transport plane to a secret base near the town of Paksa in southern Laos. It was the obvious choice as a launching pad for the mission, since all of North Vietnam was bordered by Laos to the west. Cameras were discouraged at the secret base, and photographing the Quiet One was strictly forbidden. The CIA itself had its own nickname at the base. The men there called the agency the Customer. The Quiet One was kept hidden about 600 yards northwest of where the secret base had its main building. Due to the distance, the surrounding dense forest, and the helicopter's noise-shielding gear, it couldn't be heard from the main building unless it was flying overhead. Even then, it sounded like a far-off airplane. The helicopter had its own hidden hangar, so Soviet spy planes and satellites couldn't detect its unique profile. Had it been in plain sight, features such as the extra main rotor blades, the tail rotor's scissor-like blades, or the rear fuselage with a big muffler would have revealed the non-commercial nature of the rotorcraft. Unfortunately, the initial plan to use Taiwanese pilots ended in disaster. Three months of training resulted in poor performance, bickering between them and a botched night landing that demolished one of the two quiet ones. The CIA got tired of it and sent the pilots back to Taiwan. It was determined that American pilots would have to fly the mission instead. The CIA had been hoping to get the wiretap in place before the rainy season, but the monsoon started earlier than usual in 1972, and two attempts at the mission had to turn back due to bad weather. Other mishaps ensued in the form of plain bad luck. An opportunity was lost when a scorpion stung a wiretap team commando, setting off an allergic reaction. The helicopter's experimental FLIR, or forward-looking infrared camera, also proved troublesome and led to further delays. The surveillance apparatus itself also proved problematic. The device was an unwieldy spider relay comprised of panels, electronic boxes, and antennae that opened up to a width of around 10 feet. The goal was to perch it atop tree branches with a fishnet-like webbing that would make it nearly impossible to see from the ground. It was a difficult task, even in training. Test flights took place at a nearby mock-up duplicate of the VIN site called The Hole. During one test, the relay slid off its target branches and crashed to the ground, smashing into pieces. Neither training nor the mission could proceed without the spider relay, and the CIA worried it could take over a month to send a new one from the US. Luckily, the relay was finished on site within a few days. The single secret mission of the Quiet One would ultimately take place over the 5th and 6th of December, 1972. Air America flew the remaining Quiet One out of the secret base in Laos with Vinh and North Vietnam as its destination. The stealthy helicopter was painted in standard army colors so the American pilots could claim they were lost if North Vietnamese forces discovered or shot down the helicopters. The moon had entered a favorable phase, and so on the night of December 5th, the Quiet One was flown to a base by the thai laotian border, where a de Halavan DHC-6 Twin Otter with Laotian commandos joined the mission. 
two armed commandos carrying the equipment got on the quiet one, while the rest remained on the otter, bringing parachutes and more weapons in case they became necessary. The quiet one was accompanied by an armed twin pack as it went towards the northeast. The twin pack drifted off once they reached the North Vietnamese border to circle slowly over Laos. It would be out of North Vietnamese radar range, but on call if needed. Once the wiretap spot at Vinh had been spotted, the helicopter hovered over it, and the Laotian commandos jumped down a few feet. The pilots then flew the copter west, across the Cao River to a thousand-foot-high mountain where they would set the spider relay. Intense reconnaissance work had identified the exact tree, which needed to be flat at the crown, tall, and resting on high ground with a clear view of the western horizon. In the meantime, the Laotian commandos at the site discovered the telephone poles were made of concrete instead of wood, so their pole-climbing boots and spikes were useless. Nor could they use a stapler to attach the antenna. The Laotians had to climb unassisted by their tools to place wiretaps atop the pole. The Quiet One had flown to a designated stream bed to wait for the commandos to finish attaching the solar panels. The commandos were picked up, and the helicopter returned to Laos without incident. Not a single shot was fired. It was always meant to be a one-off operation. The CIA didn't plan to send the Quiet One into North Vietnam again. A week later, all the Americans involved with the mission were on their way out of Laos, along with the equipment they had used. Whether the wiretap in Vinh actually worked remains highly classified, but it's thought to have yielded enough inside information regarding the North Vietnamese High Command that all parties signed on to the agreement for ending the war and restoring peace in Vietnam in late January 1973. The remaining Quiet One was relocated to California, and Air America pilots trained on it at Edwards Air Force Base. But suddenly, and without explanation, the Quiet One was stripped of its special features and its trail of insurance and registration papers ended in 1973. It was then transferred to another CIA front company. Some of the mechanisms created for this stealth copter, such as the modified main and rear rotors, feature in some modern helicopters. However, thanks to the many unusual modifications at the time of the VIN mission, the 500P is still the world's quietest helicopter. Mm-hmm. 